Morning, everybody, once again, and welcome to Calvary. Uh, I was told that uh, the mic wasn't on the last time for those of you watching at home. So once again, a welcome to those of you who are there. Don't know if we have any folks in the parking lot this morning, but if you are, feel free to sound off. Let's hear some horns. Any horns out there today? Hey, Yay! there's one. <laughs> All right. Either that or that's the burglar alarm at the swim club. One of the two, I don't know. But in any case, uh, it's great to have you here, whether you're online, whether you're in the parking lot, whether you're in the sanctuary. And that's where I want to start this morning. As you know, the governor has come down with some uh, stronger uh, restrictions in some places. He did exempt houses of worship uh, from the 25 or under gathering rule. But know that it's a fluid situation. And as we've said the whole way along, you have a uh, coronavirus COVID-19 task force here at the church that is working every single week to... Uh, you know, assess where we are in terms of the local and the state guidelines, making sure that everything is done in a safe and proper manner so that we can continue to have worship here. And know that it's flexible. Uh, if we have to uh, retrograde a little bit and maybe take a step backwards, not saying we're going to, but we're prepared to move in any direction possible. And we will certainly keep you posted about that. So we want your uh, worship with us here at Calvary to be among all things uh, meaningful but safe as well. So. Uh, know that we continue to work about that throughout the uh, the entire week. Calvary's Christmas market coming up this uh, Friday. Um, and it's going to be, where is, there's Evelyn. So Evelyn, what do you need from us? 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. this Friday, it will be all outside with the exception of the restrooms, as Evelyn pointed out. And she does need some warm bodies and volunteers to help out. More baked goods? Wonderful. Thank you, Evelyn. And for those of you at home, online, in the parking lot, um, basically what she said was uh, the 10 to 6 thing, and you really just need to come, okay? Uh, she needs uh, uh, donations of baked goods. If you'd like a pie, let Evelyn know. She can do that. And then the dinner uh, begins at 3.30 as well with the crab cakes. And you know how dinners go around here. So um, make sure you come, y'all. Uh, uh, any other announcements this morning that we need to make before we uh, continue on? Uh, just a reminder that uh, we uh, are welcoming our kids who are watching online today, and we are going to have a special word for the day, and the word for the day is talent. And every time you hear the word talent mentioned during the service, and you kids here in the sanctuary can do it too, it's two snaps. Okay, so when I say talent, you do two snaps. And uh, that's how we'll do it today. Um, and, and by the way, there will be no singing of the kids thing. Last, last week I got a little carried away and I got yelled at for making you sing. So uh, we're not supposed to sing. So we're not going to do that. Um, the Divlers will be back next week. We hope that they are uh, praying that they are having a wonderful vacation. We've heard nothing from them, which seems to indicate that perhaps they are and they're tuned out. And uh, boy, we just want them to come back refreshed, uh, feeling good. Uh, about where things are and know that we haven't wrecked the place while they were gone. Uh, to that end, I want to welcome uh, our assistant. If you haven't met uh, Tom Smoot yet, Tom is uh, going to be here and he's taking more of an active role as we get going here. Uh, he doesn't know it yet, but he'll be uh, doing the sermon next week. Uh, so, okay, 
No, well, we'll wing it. No, he doesn't know that. But in any case, and uh, Pastor Laura Cinch, who's been here before with us today, is here. And uh, she'll be uh, delivering the message today. So we're very happy about that. Uh, so I think that's just about it. Uh, in, in terms, I know we do God spotting around here, too. And I just uh, wanted to pass on a personal one uh, that uh, was somewhat meaningful to this week. Uh, we got a chance the other day to steal down to Ocean City. Um, for a couple of days on an empty beach, uh, properly social distanced. And uh, I just had a moment uh, yesterday sitting out on the beach with my wife, and I was just watching everything, and, and I felt this just sort of blanket of calm just sort of wash over. And with everything that's been going on lately with COVID, with the news of the elections, with all of the strife and the stress and the tension and everything that's been going on, um, it was uh, really a good awakening moment. Now, you guys can find those moments wherever you want, however you want. Um, I encourage you to seek them out because they're just wonderful moments where you look back and you take in creation and you understand that God is in control more than ever and that, uh, you know, he's going to see us through. So with that said, uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and start our worship this morning. Once again, Beth and Becky are leading us here, and uh, we're going to do a song called I Will Follow. Oh, I'm sorry, Pastor Sinch. Please. I just wanted to give one brief announcement. Um, I am the campus pastor uh, in the Baltimore area, so I serve the campuses of Towson, UMBC, and support our ministry at Morgan State. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you to the people of Calvary. It is synod congregations um, that help make the ministry that I get uh, to do with students possible. Um, our ministry is all online. We are not able to gather like you are. All three of the, the campuses that I serve are closed, um, and we are encouraged not to be in person, but the church still finds ways to show up, as we know. So I have had the privilege of gathering with Zoom, so very, very much Zoom, uh, with my students. But even in the midst of their Zoom classes, they still come, because there's something about being in a community where you are known and loved, a place where we also do God spotting. We share our God moments every week. We pray for each other. We talk about things that matter. We laugh a lot because we all need that release and that connection with our neighbors. Um, and we've found new students looking for community that have been integrated into uh, our community on all of our campuses uh, this semester. And I've even begun a Bible study with a student who was not raised in the church, who had been with us for a year and finally got up her courage this year to say, I want to know the stories of the faith so that I can actually participate more. So we have been flying through the life of Jesus. We just, uh, Jesus has just been arrested. We're waiting for him. Uh, <laughs> he's in the middle of Holy Week right now. And to watch her eyes start to understand the story, she now understands the Christmas story. She understands why there are angels and shepherds put out now. She's starting to understand about who Jesus was and the miracles he did and starting to draw connections between those. And it has been amazing. So God is continuing to show up just in new and creative ways. Um, I also want to thank um, Calvary because you have given us Tori Wright, who is a part of our ministry at Towson. So thank you for sharing her with us. Um, and Tom Smoot was also, he was our student leader last year at Towson. Um, so it is a great joy to get to uh, be with him up here leading worship um, and to see what God is continuing to do through him. So thank you for continuing to uh, support the work that we do together. My love. 
and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we remember all the mistakes we have made, all the careless words we have spoken, all the contempt we have given to those around us, we have trouble looking God in the eye. But God gazes at us with mercy and love, waiting to forgive us. Join me as we pray together. We confess to you, creator of the universe, our struggle to be faithful disciples. Entrusted with all your gifts, we become fearful of losing and miss the chance to be a blessing to others. Invited to dance in the light of your love, we stand against the wall and hesitate to join your movement. Call to be empty for those who struggle. We fill ourselves with scorn for the poor choices they make of us. Have mercy, O God. Have mercy, O God. Open our eyes to your kingdom. We might discover that the day of hope and grace has already come in Jesus Christ, the Lord. This is the good news. God intends for us to find life, to embrace hope, to receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our servant. God's word for us is not rejection, but the fullness of grace and hope. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Share a glance or a wave of peace with each other.
promise to give hope, to restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. You give life. struggle to control our lives, may we empty ourselves of pride and fears, be filled with your hope. Now, in these moments, when we cannot let go of our worries and doubts, may we open our hands and hold your faith. Now, on this day, which is your gift to us, may we live into your kingdom. 
now as we lift our hearts to you, merciful God. Hear our prayer and bless us with your holy presence. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. <clears throat> now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. For it is this, Jesus said to, this, to the disciples, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents. To another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made you two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent into the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Well, you are very good snappers. 
But uh, I hate to disappoint you, but I am indeed preaching on the other lesson. So um, your talent snapping fingers can get a rest now. Stay awake. Keep vigilant. That's what Paul tells us in the letter to the Thessalonians. He says, stay awake, keep vigilant, for the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Sounds a little ominous, doesn't it? And I promise you that is the least scary of the three lessons appointed for today. November is the month in the church where we read about the end of days. Not really helpful in the midst of our country right now, but that's how the church set it up. So this morning we hear the Apostle Paul telling us, hey folks, don't panic. But since Jesus is coming when no one expects, just stay awake and stay vigilant and you'll be fine. And I don't know if it's just me being tired this week, but that sounds exhausting. Especially when right now we're also being called to stay extra vigilant about our health and the health of those whom we come in contact with. Staying vigilant sounds exhausting, as I feel like we've been there for months. And staying vigilant, to me, sounds like we need to keep one eye open at all times and be slightly anxious and be ready to burst into action at any moment. We don't always have the energy for that. But I don't think this is what Paul is saying, thanks be to God. He has something completely different in mind. He means something a little more like live ready. Now, back in middle school, um, I got home from school before my mom got home from work. And when I got home, there would always be waiting on the kitchen counter a list for me. It was a list of chores that my mom expected me to do. But like most middle schoolers, I would look at the list and then I would grab a snack and then I would watch some TV, and then I would find every other possible way to waste time, all until I heard the garage door open. And then my heart would race, and I would jump up to begin my chores so that I would look busy when Mom came home. Because I wanted to wait till the very last minute to do my chores, I always lived in terror of hearing that garage door open. I lived in terror rather than simply being vigilant, by being ready, by getting the stuff done so that I could just relax and enjoy the day. This is kind of what Paul is telling us. He's saying, church, don't live in fear of the garage door of Jesus returning. Don't fear the Lord coming like a thief in the night. Just do the things now while you have a chance. Paul tells his church, a church that was probably struggling. Oh, dear church, he says, hear this happy truth. You are children of the light. You are ones that know what's going to happen. You are people who have known the hope that Jesus brings. You are ones who know that you are loved beyond your mistakes by your God. You are ones who have known the stories of Jesus, how he fed the hungry and welcomed the outcast and healed the suffering. You are ones who have a peek at the end of the story where Jesus defeats death. So you're children of light. You get how to live, so you have the chance to live ready and to live vigilant and to be able to greet Jesus with utter joy when he comes. So live ready, he says. Feed your neighbors and those who are vulnerable. Remind your neighbors that God is already holding them up and holding up this world even when it doesn't feel like it. Live ready by forgiving others and by being gentle to them. Live ready by bringing healing to relationships, by praying desperately for people and communities, by speaking against the powers of evil, and giving away more than makes sense so that everyone may have enough. 
You are children of light, Paul says. So live like that child of light that God has made you to be. Do it now while you have a chance, not so that God will love you more, because that's simply not possible. Just like my mom didn't love me more when I actually did my chores on time, those very few times when that happened. But so that we may simply live out Jesus' way of love now, so that we will be ready to greet him with joy rather than with fear. But it's not going to be easy, Paul says. You're going to need to do more than really try hard to stay awake and vigilant. Because that's a recipe for failure. As anyone who has tried to stay awake reading a college textbook with too little sleep knows. You're going to need help. And Paul says it's a battle out there trying to stay focused on living out the love and hope of Jesus. So put on your armor. Paul says that besides our masks, we should clothe ourselves in the breastplate of faith and love. Cover your heart with the gift of my love. The gift of God's love, Paul says, so you will always be reminded of your beginning and your end and your ultimate home, which is the love of God. And the, when the world tempts you to anger and to hatred and to jealousy, return to that breastplate of God's love. Let your trust in Jesus and in his vision of the future protect you when you look into the darkness of the world and get discouraged. And let your trust in Jesus' way of love guard your heart when you're tempted to find security in the things of this world. And once you got that breastplate in place, you're going to need something for your head, Paul says. So put on the helmet of hope. Arm yourself with the hope of God's saving power to protect your mind and your imagination against feeling that nothing really matters at all in the world. Hold on and guard yourself with the stories of Jesus' healing so that you can believe again what is possible. Arm your mind with the stories that you have known in your own life, all of those God sightings, where life has come out of death and where hope has come out of despair and where peace has swept over you like a gift. And let the songs of joy that God brings or that you hear from our music team rattle around in your head to protect you from the noisy world that tries to distract us. Put on your armor, Paul says. And then, when you are rooted in Jesus again, when you are all suited up, then go back into the world and keep up the work that you were created to do. Caring for the poor, visiting those in prison, welcoming those who are lonely and ignored, and speaking the love of God for all people. This is how Paul tells us to live. But as I've been struggling with this this week, I've also been struggling with the fact that there's a whole lot of words going on, especially as we're not able to be with people. It seems like our world is filled up with words. And I was thinking that I really wanted something tangible to help me remember to be uh, suited up in my armor. But I didn't happen to have a suit of armor lying around home. But I just felt like I needed a physical reminder of God with me for the days ahead. The same way that God gifts us with physical reminders because we need no, because he knows that we humans need that. It's why we have the physical gift of Holy Communion, even if we may be apart from it and longing for it now. It's why we have the waters of baptism that we can dip our fingers into or that we can remember when we draw water from the faucet. Because God knows sometimes we need some physical things to remind us of the promises and the goodness of God. So if you are like me and don't happen to have a suit of armor lying around your home, perhaps there are other signs this week that might be helpful for you. As I was thinking over this, I was realizing two habits that I have that I barely even notice. 
that seemed to help me connect to this passage this week. When I find that my heart is overwhelmed with worry, I kind of unconsciously just put my hand over my heart. It's a way for me to ground myself and center myself again. It reminds me that I need to take some breaths. And I have noticed that every time I do it, after those deep breaths, putting my hand on my heart tends to turn me to prayer. And it helps me to refocus again on the task before me. So maybe this week, this might be a gesture for you. It might be a symbol for you. Maybe it's something you might do as you begin your day as a reminder of that breastplate of faith and love that God offers us. That breastplate that can keep our hearts from being overwhelmed by worry or by anger. And I also noticed this week that when I am despairing, and that usually happens when I have messed up at something and I am embarrassed about it, I find that I have this tendency to make the sign of the cross on my forehead so that I can remember again that I am called a beloved child of God, even if I don't feel like it at all. And it seemed like this might be a little bit like that helmet of hope that, God calls, that Paul calls us to put on, that armor that can guard our minds against despair, despair with ourselves and despair with the world. These are tiny little actions, and they don't mean anything in and of themselves. But perhaps, for those of us who need something physical to hold on to as a reminder of God's love this week, they may be gifts to us and symbols to us. Perhaps they can remind us of the love of God that grounds our lives and the hope of God's future that gives us strength to keep caring for our neighbors and those who are vulnerable. Perhaps doing these small things will help us remember our names. Children of light and servants of God. Maybe they will help us, maybe these actions will help us be vigilant and faithful in a world that seems out of control. And Paul reminds us, this armor that we put on, however we're gonna do that this week, our armor, just like our masks, are not just to protect us. Our armor is so that we are strengthened so that we can support others. Paul says, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, as indeed you are doing. Paul says, when our hope and faith and love are renewed, then we get to steady the next person. Now, some of you may have seen me hobbling around for the last five weeks, I have been wearing this boot for a broken foot. And during that time, I have become very well aware that I can't do everything by myself, especially stairs. <laughs> and I've also realized that I often need somebody beside me because I'm wobbly. And I need someone to steady me and help me with some things. And frankly, people of God, I don't think it's just me. I think all of us are a little wobbly after this year. So we put on our armor to strengthen ourselves in the world outside, but also so that we can steady our wobbly neighbors. The people of God, put on your armor. Be clothed in the goodness of God, in the hope of God, in the love of God this week. Remind yourself of that when looking into the world is scary and overwhelming. And when you are strengthened, go out to strengthen your neighbor. Remind them of the hope of God and the love of God. And remind them of the joyful race that we are running. Remind each other that our work for the Lord matters. That love and forgiveness and caring for neighbors and making peace matters. Encourage your neighbors this week in love and hold them up when they are wobbly and pray that they might hold you up when you are wobbly as well so that we all may live together as children of light and servants of God for the sake of the world. 
Amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles. I believe in God, Father, <clears throat> longing for Christ's reign to come among us. We pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love by the fire of your Holy Spirit. Unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and show us how to participate in your activity throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth and restore its integrity where exploitation or natural disasters have caused it. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially when international leaders forge trade agreements and co cooperate to end human rights abuses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. We lift up before you RJ for minor surgery, Alex and Mary for baby watch, Linda Twenty and Sheila Frizzell at the death of their mother. Lynn, woman. There are others for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us that we will extend love to those at the margin. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Let us strive for reconciliation after the bruising election campaign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all disciples, you have entrusted us with riches and talent. Inspire us to use them for your glory. May all that we are and all that we have become tools to make your kingdom grow. This week, we especially ask you to bless our members, Joseph, Marlene, Rhiannon, and Justice, Justin Everett, John and Doris Exeter, Harry and Leslie Faith, David, Julie, Jana, and Elise Spencer Mocker. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints that rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example, that saints yet to come may also know your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen.
his face shine upon you. Be gracious to me. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you, he is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you, he is for you, he is for you. 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 be with you. Also. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are alone, our holy God of all time, and blessed is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. When we had walked away from your gracious love, you turned to us in Christ to save us. When we were no longer willing to listen, your word of hope came among us to live your love in our midst. When we foolishly clung to sin's deadly ways, Jesus reached out to pull us from the grasp of death and showed us the kingdom. Therefore, we remember with thanksgiving that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, 